Now in this video, we're going to write and balance the molecular ionic and net ionic equation for an acid-base reaction. So in this reaction, we have H2SO3, which is sulfurous acid, not sulfuric, that's H2SO4. H2SO3 is sulfurous acid. And KOH, KOH is potassium hydroxide. So here's our acid. And potassium hydroxide is a strong base. So this is an acid-base neutralization reaction. The same rules are going to apply that we did with the ionic reaction, with the precipitation reaction, to write the molecular ionic and net ionic. So first of all, the reaction of an acid and a base produces two things. It produces water and a salt. And by salt we just mean an ionic compound. So water is going to be our first product. Order doesn't really matter, but I like to write it first. And the state of matter for water is liquid, so L. And then the second product. Now where does the water come from in an acid-base reaction? As long as you're dealing with a strong base, then you have hydroxide. If you're dealing with a weak base, then that's a different video. But a strong base has hydroxide, OH. So the way this works is the hydroxide, OH, will combine with the hydrogens written in the acid that are not part of the polyatomic ions. Some of these, like acetic acid, have hydrogens that are written in the polyatomic ion. In the case of acetic acid, that's the acetate ion. You're looking at the hydrogens that are outside of the polyatomic ion. So those hydrogens will react with the hydroxide to make H2O. And yes, it's not going to be balanced yet because I have two hydrogens, three hydrogens, so two hydrogens there, one there, three hydrogens and one oxygen. Obviously it doesn't make H2O. Don't worry, when we balance it, it will work out. The second part, the ionic salt that's formed, comes from the positive ion from our base reacting with the negative ion from our acid so our potassium and our sulfate. So potassium is K plus and then sulfite is SO3 with a 2 minus charge. This is sulfite. When you combine these you get potassium and sulfite. Now of course you write the potassium first, cation always written first, in order to balance the charges, because I have a 2 minus here and a 1 plus here, it's going to take two potassiums to every one sulfite. So the formula for that is going to be K2SO3. And as for the state of matter, when you go to check the solubility tables, you'll see that anything containing potassium is always soluble with no exception. So this is soluble, which means it will be aqueous. Sometimes you have an acid base neutralization that also forms a precipitant. So now we have our molecular equation. All we have to do now is to balance that equation. So balancing. Let's look for things that aren't balanced. Obviously the hydrogens aren't balanced, but that's a little bit tricky because I've got hydrogen in both of my acid and my base. So let's look at something else that's not balanced. I notice that potassium isn't balanced. I have a two two potassiums on the product side, but only one on the reactant side. So let's put a coefficient of two out front here. Now still leaving off hydrogen because it's in two different things, a little confusing. Let's notice here if I've got a two here, it doesn't just make two potassiums, it also makes two oxygens and two hydrogens. Water only has one oxygen per molecule, so if I put a two out in front of the water, now that accounts for the two oxygens. But that means I'm going to need a grand total of four hydrogens. So to get four hydrogens, I've got two from the potassium hydroxide. I don't want to change this coefficient because then that would mess up potassium. So over here, I've got two hydrogens. Two plus two will give me those four. So I'm actually already balanced. So that is my molecular equation. So the next step here is to write the ionic equation. Ionic equation takes anything that is a uh, strong electrolyte and breaks it apart. So, strong electrolytes break apart. K 
key word here is strong electrolytes, not weak electrolytes, not non-electrolytes. So remember, the only things that are strong electrolytes are soluble ionic compounds, and strong acids. Those are the only things we have that are strong electrolytes. Everything else stays the same. So let's, starting with the first component we have, which is sulfurous acid. Sulfurous acid is an acid, but is it a strong acid? We only have seven strong acids. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid, but sulfurous is not a strong acid. So because that's a weak acid, it is a weak electrolyte, therefore it does not break apart. So it will stay H2SO3. It will stay as the compound. We will not change it in any way. All right, now KOH, because it has a metal out in front, it is an ionic compound, and it is aqueous. So it is a soluble ionic, which means it's a strong electrolyte, which means we break it apart. So when we break apart KOH, we get the positive K ions. Make sure everything gets its own state of matter. And I have two potassium, so that two goes to the potassium. And then I get OH minus ions, hydroxide ions. And because I have two of the whole compound, that means the two gets distributed. And I also have two of the OHs. So that's it for my reactant side. Moving on to my product side. Water. Is water a strong electrolyte? No, actually it's a non-electrolyte because it's not ionic, it's not an acid, it's not a base. So because it is a non-electrolyte, it does not change in any way and we just carry it down exactly the same as it was in our molecular equation. K2SO3, so this is potassium sulfite. That is an ionic compound because it has a metal, potassium, and it is soluble, it's aqueous, so it will break apart. So K2SO3, when it breaks apart, I get potassium ions, and I have two of them, so that two comes in front, two potassium ions, and it gets its own state of matter. And then I have sulfite ions, so sulfite ion is SO3 with a two minus charge there, and I only have one of them, so. If everything got carried down correctly, you should still be balanced. So this is our ionic equation. Next thing I'm going to do is write the net ionic equation. So the net ionic equation cancels out any spectator ions. Now, keyword there is spectator ions. A spectator ion must be an ion, and it must occur on both sides in exactly the same way. So looking over here, I have two potassiums aqueous on the reactant side and two potassiums aqueous on the product side. So this is a spectator ion, and I can cancel it out from my net ionic equation. Hydroxide doesn't appear on the product side, so that's not a spectator ion. Sulfite does not appear on the reactant side by itself, so that's not a spectator ion. So in this case, potassium was the only spectator ion we have. So everything else, write it down. And this is now our net ionic equation. Notice that we ended up with water and an ion because we had a spectator ion there that cancels out. If this was a strong acid with a strong base, the net ionic equation would have just been hydrogen ion plus hydroxide ion yields water. If we'd had a weak base, then the weak base wouldn't have broken apart. So with acid, base, molecular ionic, and net ionic equations, there's a couple of different things that can happen there. You can have everything but the hydrogen and hydroxide cancel out, or you can have absolutely nothing cancel out. If you had a weak acid reacting with a weak base, nothing would cancel out, and you'd end up with a uh, net ionic equation that was identical to your original ionic equation.